Hieronymus Jones and the Teacup Squid, a YA coming-of-age fantasy romance novel filled with magic, humour, and tentacles. Written and narrated by Michael Palmer Cryle. Chapter 1 It possessed the kind of nauseating stench that made your nostrils throw up into their own mouths. A wretch-inducing odour produced by a place that the boy simply could not understand why anybody enjoyed, let alone sought out the ocean. He gazed out of the second-story window at that shimmering blue mess of water and wondered to himself, why in the name of all that's holy would anyone willingly set foot into that quagmire of sea foam and fish farts? Hieronymus Jones hated the ocean. Hate was not the word. Wasn't strong enough. Loathe, perhaps? Yes, he loathed the ocean, and the fact that he lived on an island completely surrounded by the stuff irked him to no small degree. The island itself was considered by most to be quite a beautiful place. The beaches were a cheerful pale yellow and made of sand, as opposed to those small rocks that pretend they are a beach but actually slice the soles of your feet to ribbons. The island was mid-sized, large enough that you couldn't walk all the way around it without packing a picnic lunch, a torch and a change of clothes, yet small enough that its population was only a few thousand strong. Densely forested in the centre with a natural freshwater spring that fed a small, sluggish river of crystalline water that snaked through the centre of town. This was most people's idea of heaven. Most people, but not Hieronymus Jones. It was not simply the ocean that caused him to narrow his eyes in disgust, but the island itself. Not because of the forest or river or the little town with roughly hewn cobblestone streets that the city council chose not to turn into something more presentable. No. He hated the island for what it had taken from him, and for the secrets it refused to reveal. However, the boy had secrets of his own. Coronimus was a strange boy, a hair past fifteen, tall and pale with jet black hair, dark brown eyes, and a very peculiar kind of mind. Hieronymus Jones! His name had not been said, but screeched, and at high volume. Yes, Miss Cooper. Hieronymus replied apathetically, yet sweetly enough so as not to earn further disapproval from his ageing teacher. Pay attention! She narrowed her eyes, causing the thin skin around them to contort into a flurry of crow's feet and other assorted wrinkles. Her thin lips pursed to such a degree that Hieronymus feared that if she were to purse any harder, her lips would dislodge from her face. The small classroom laughed mockingly at the expense of Hieronymus Jones. The cackle was joined by the occasional utterance of loser. Nothing new there. Certainly nothing for him to concern himself with. Hieronymus was very often the target of unpleasant behaviour. He had learned to not care, or more correctly, learned not to show that he did. Miss Cooper continued taking attendance as she had been doing when she caught Hieronymus deep in ocean-hating thought. One by one she read off the names of her class as students. It was not a long process. The class was comprised of 17 students, a fairly large class for a community of this size, and was about to grow ever so slightly larger. The knock on the classroom door was sharp and slightly annoyed. The knocker did not wait for an invitation, but simply entered. This was, after all, his school. Principal Abernathy loomed in the doorway, a tower of a man. He had to dip his head slightly to avoid hitting the door's frame as he entered. Miss Cooper, you look... Well, Principal Abernathy half-heartedly spoke in a monotone voice. Miss Cooper simply made a guttural grunt in response. She was well aware that she did not look well. She looked like she was pushing 19 was sick to the back teeth of this island and all of its frickin' students. She did, however, manage a strained smile. Principal Abernathy handed Miss Cooper a few sheets of loose paper. His dour and slightly disturbing expression had not changed since he entered the room and would not change after he left it. Possibly not ever. New student. Transfer. Principal Abernathy knew the grumbling that would come from Miss Cooper, and as he had no interest in any such grumblings, he beat a hasty retreat. As he dipped his head and glided back out the door, he simply said, Go in now, in a disinterested kind of way. A small face poked sheepishly around the edge of the door, and Aronimus, who had been completely unconcerned with these goings-on, saw her for the first time, and sat up a little straighter in his seat. 
It was extremely unusual for a student to transfer to a school this late in the year. It was even more unusual for a student to transfer here, ever. Hieronymus Jones had never heard of a student transfer to the island before. There was no mention of any transfer since the building of the school 137 years ago. Hieronymus had read every record and remembered every word. This was indeed an unusual event, but not as unusual as her. Well, come in, dear. Miss Cooper spoke in a softer tone than she usually did, almost welcoming. The new girl entered the room and stood to the side and slightly behind Miss Cooper. She seemed to be studying her own feet intensely. Either they were extraordinarily interesting feet, or the new girl was terrified. Class, we have a new student. Everybody say hello to... Uh, what, what was your name, dear? Miss Cooper fumbled through the sheets of paper she had been given moments ago. It was all for show. She wasn't wearing her glasses and was blind as a bat without them. She was simply waiting for the new girl to pipe up and introduce herself, which was taking an annoyingly long time, Miss Cooper thought to herself. Green. Gertrude Green, the new girl squeaked. Like Bond, James Bond. The comment was met with far too much laughter for a very ordinary joke, but this reaction was normal when the jokes were made by Lucas Ballantyne. Tall, blonde, blue eyes. Hieronymus Jones hated Lucas Ballantyne. Not as much as the ocean, certainly, but still more than was average. Settle down, Miss Cooper hissed. Lucas Ballantyne curled his lip but remained silent. Continue. Gertrude, was it? Miss Cooper was fast, losing interest. Yes, ma'am. Um, just Gertie. The new girl squeaked again. You can take a seat, Gertrude. Miss Cooper scanned the room with failing eyes. There, at the back, next to Christelle. When Miss Cooper said that, she wasn't intending to incur the wrath of the impossibly spoiled Christelle. Yet wrath was coming her way nonetheless. Ugh, I don't think so. Christelle spoke in an accent that was not real and fooled nobody. Hieronymus assumed the girl had fashioned this accent after watching too much television. It was the sort of accent that used the word like as punctuation. Tall, blonde, blue eyes. Hieronymus hated Christelle. Not as much as Lucas or the ocean, certainly, but still more than was average. Like, she looked like she was dressed by an eight-year-old like 20 years ago. I like don't want her sitting near me. Crystal's use of like only three times, in ways other than its intended use, had to be some kind of record for her. Hieronymus looked at Gertrude. She was mortified, as one would expect. Her first day, and this was her welcome? Unacceptable. There's a spare desk beside me, Miss Cooper. Perhaps that would be a better fit? Hieronymus stated in a matter-of-fact kind of way. Miss Cooper nodded her approval, and Gertrude walked over to the spare desk, away from that horrible girl and toward this very... Odd boy. As the new girl, Gertrude, approached what was to be her new desk, she was scrutinised by every resident of the classroom. She wore high-top sneakers with different coloured laces on each. Light blue faded overall shorts that ended halfway down her thigh and had a pocket on the front at her chest, and a very old and worn t-shirt that was many sizes too big for her. Hieronymus hated to admit it, but she did indeed dress oddly. However, there was something charming about the style. Beguiling. Gertrude was taller than most of the girls in her new class, but still a head shorter than Hieronymus. She was as pale as he was, but where his skin had an almost ashen tone, hers was like milk. Pale, but vibrant. There were a smattering of freckles on her cheeks and the bridge of her nose. Her eyes were hard to make out, as they were mostly covered by thick, wavy, and impossibly red hair. That hair was long and wild, not messy, just untamed. As Gertrude took her seat, she looked at Hieronymus, and for the first time he saw her eyes. Absurdly green, flecked with amber and fighting to hold back tears. Thank you, Gertrude barely whispered the words. I abhor a bully, Hieronymus stated, as if his actions were no more important than placing a lunch order. But those actions, the simple act of offering this girl a place to sit, would irrevocably alter both of their lives, for as long as they lived them. It slept deeply. It had not moved in centuries. A churning mass of twisted flesh. Large chunks of floating ice drifted around the creature like satellites as it slumbered. No light made it down this far. It slept undisturbed, surrounded by the black and the cold. It not only slept, it waited for something far away and high above.
I hope you enjoyed today's chapter of Hieronymus Jones and the Teacup Squid. If you did, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon so that you won't miss a single chapter. This book, as well as the other three volumes of the Hieronymus Jones series, is available from my website, www.voodoodelicious.com, as well as Amazon and iTunes. Thank you for listening, and I hope you'll join me next time.